Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. We continue with the controller design and we will use in this example the root logos method and this is our example number one. In this example I will discuss the P controller design and we will look at the calculations and also simulations to verify our calculations in MATLAB. So let's look at our example. So we have the following situation. We have a second order system and we will have a proportional controller design for this system. So we have the following plant. This is our controller in cascade with a plant and we have the unity gain feedback configuration. This is the plant which is given here. There's a one over S plus one times S plus four, which is just a second order system with two poles in the left half plane of our complex uh, plane. And this is already a stable system for a specific value of the gain. Now the controller is just given for the K. So this is actually what we have. Now the design specifications from there, we will uh, then calculate the required value for our design equations. Okay. Now design uh, specifications are the following. We have the overshoot and this is equal to less than 10%. So 0 0.10. So it is maximum 10%. And the settling time with a 2% criteria must be less than 2 seconds. Now, from these two specifications, we will then determine our design point or the operating point in our system. So, let's look at the solutions. We start with the damping ratio. First, we use the overshoot, which is 0 0.10. And from there, we will calculate the damping ratio zeta using this formula. I substitute the values in this formula and I get approximately 0.591. Okay. The next step is using the settling time formula, which is settling time is equal to two. I calculate the absolute damping, which is omega, or I mean sigma of D. So sigma of D is equal to four over the given settling time. And I take just the edge, which is two seconds. So it will be two, four over two will be two radians per second. And this is an important parameter we will use later on. Also, we have the omega d, which is the imaginary part of our design point. This is the real part. So the sigma d and imaginary part is the omega d, which is by geometry, sigma d times the tangent of or cosine of this damping ratio. So if I just Substitute values given here will be two times tan tangent of r cosine of the zeta will be 2.7 radians per second. Now I have then the real part and also the imaginary part according to this specification. So my dominant close to poles can be determined using the sigma d and also the omega d. There will be minus two plus or minus j 2.7. So our design point is just one of these. So we will take most of the time the one with the positive imaginary part. So the design point then will be minus two plus. But the question is, of course, is this the design point that we can use in our system, in this system? So that's the question. So we need to verify this. Let's look at the root locus plot. These are two open system poles, minus one from the GP and also the minus five it can be here, shown here. Now, if I set it in the unity gain feedback configuration with this controller K and I adjust the value of K, you can see at zero for K equal to zero, the, uh, the roots start at minus one and minus five. And then when you increase the gain, make it positive, this, these two poles will come to each other and will reach each other at minus three, some specific value for K. And if you increase it even further, going in that direction, in this direction, so you will have complex poles. We will need to draw in this plane, in this root locus plot, actually the absolute damping line, which is a vertical line, and also the zeta line, which is actually a line from the origin uh, which goes with a specific slope and that slope will be determined by the cosine of this, I mean, or arc cosine of this zeta. So this actually this plot. So this red line is actually the zeta line or the damping ratio line. And this theta is actually the arc cosine of this damping ratio. This dark blue line here is the absolute damping line. 
And what do you see? The S1, which is actually this S1 minus 2 plus J 2.7 is actually shown here. The, but the problem is actually the following, okay? The design point is clearly seen here. We have intersection between this red line and this dark blue line, which is given by this green dot. But it is not on our locus. So the locus is actually this red line, which is not the inter, which doesn't have inter, intersection with this green line. So what can I do? This we have the following note, root locus of the peak control system does not go through the design point we have. What we can do is, we need to place actually at max, uh, this is actually what you have for two maximum, uh, absolute maximum allowed value. So I can say, this is the damping ratio line and I can place the design point, for example, at P1, which is at the edge of the uh, of this uh, damping ratio line and it will be also stay at the left side of this dark blue line. It is allowed to stay if you look only at the setting time criteria to be in this left hand side of this line, vertical line. I cannot be in the right hand, left hand, right hand side of this uh, vertical line in terms of just setting time. In terms of just only the overshoot, I need to stay in this region. So in this region, not in that region, but in this region. So if you have an overlap, you will have actually this specific region. So if I want to stay in that safe region at the edge, P1 is a possible option. So that will be, of course, have an intersection. I can, of course, take this one or take that one. That will be also uh, perfectly fine. Then I can use this tangent and then use then that to calculate the required value for the imaginary part. And I already see that the uh, real part is minus three. So let's go the, through the calculation. So what is then the actual design point now? So we have the angle between the damping ratio line and also the negative real axis. And it will be given by this formula already said, theta is equal to r cosine of the zeta. And it will be in this case, theta is an r cosine of 0 0.591 will be 54 degrees. That's actually for this theta. If I continue, the actual design point then has a real part of minus three. And then in imaginary part is just geometry to do math here. You will see that the three times tangent of 54 degrees will be 4.1 radius per second. That means this is the 4.1, J 4.1, and this is a minus J 4.1. So you will have the following actually uh, expression for R. P1 shortly and this is our J 4.1 and minus 4.1. So our design point is conclusion and the actual design point is then P1 is equal to minus, so you can see it here, minus 3 plus J 4.1. That is actually the design point we will use to design our controller. So let's look at the next steps. So the root locus equation is given by this expression, which is one plus the loop gain is equal to zero. So I need to determine the loop gain. Now loop gain L of S is given for this system as shown that it's a K, which is just the controller times the plant. And we have of course the K and the plant is then given by this one over S plus one times S plus five. Okay, now then we have the following expression. I just take uh, this expression in here and I have one plus K times one over S plus one times S plus five is equal to zero. If I simplify this, just work out this fraction, I will have S plus one times S plus five plus K is equal to zero. Now, if I set all of the parameters here, so I will isolate K in this expression, I will have the following expression. Now I will evaluate the value of K at the design point, what we have, which is minus three plus J 4.1. So I will have done the following. So if I now evaluate this at for S is equal to P1, P1 and P1, then I have the following. So I just substitute the values. What you get is minus three plus J 4.1 plus one. And then the other one is minus three plus J 4.1 plus Five. So if you simplify this, you will get the following expression. Now I would like to, of course, calculate the absolute value of that. So what is the magnitude of this one? So we will take the magnitude, that is just the length of this 
complex expression times the length of this complex expression and this minus sign minus sign will just drop off but just given and just in phase so we don't need this so this will be the absolute value and if you use the square root of this one and also the squares of the real and imaginary part same for this one you will get 20.8 that means this is also the control gain but specifically at the edge actually for the two design specifications we have given in this example so that doesn't mean that you have to go all exactly 2.8 20.8 i mean you can also get a little bit lower and see how far we can go also in the simulation so this is actually what we have so that means in conclusion we require a p controller with a gain of 2.20.8 that means the controller will be is equal to k 20.8 so we have now determined our maximum value in theory for our controller gain k so what is actually the range of this controller gain k so how uh, far can we go what is the range so can i make it even lower for example maybe 17 maybe 16 or is there a, also a limit uh, in the lower side of this value of k so let's look at it we start with a closed loop uh, system transfer function t of s which is given by the mason's gain rule just which is just the forward transfer functions multiplied divided by one plus the loop k, which is actually this expression now, if I just substitute the values first, uh, of course, the controller K and also the open loop system, I have this. And if I simplify this, I will get this expression. Now, even uh, work out this parenthesis, I will have this expression for our uh, closed loop system. I will look at the poles of our closed loop system. And these are given by the denominator, and I will set that equal to zero. Now, you can calculate the poles uh, symbolically just using the following formula you have this minus six here and you will take then square root of this squared minus four times one which is just the coefficient of this s squared term times the constant actually in this second order expression so what we have is in the following you divide by two times again the coefficient of this s squared now if you simplify this you will have the following and i have now put it also a j here and made actually this a complex expression okay now, since we have real poles then we get actually then i can get rid of the j and i have then square root of four minus k and it must be less than or equal to minus two you might ask why because it starts at uh, minus one your open loop system and it goes all the way to minus uh, five and you will now have the minus two which is the edge actually of our absolute damping ratio uh, the absolute damping so which is the uh, damping line we have from our settling time criteria so i need to stay also at the left of this real pole so this is actually the edge for our specification so if i now do the math here and I can now, of course, take the three the other way. And I will have this. And if I now look at it just in the positive sign, I will now have the value of K, which must be larger than or equal to three. So this is actually the minimum value. So if I combine now the minimum value and also the maximum value I have calculated as 20.8, I will have then to meet both requirements and also the range for the controller gain must be then k larger than or equal to zero, uh, 3 but smaller or equal to 20.8 but we need to of course verify this this is all in theory so we need to check that so let's jump to our simulations so simulation results root locus plot and i will also give the unit step response of the close-up system with a p controller in this case the app the upper limit of our controller 20.8 so i will have also root locus plot and also the unit step response which is shown here on the left side i have the root locus plot you can see directly the in yellow which is the forbidden region according to the absolute damping uh, line and also the zeta lines and this is the the blue line is actually our locus roots of the open loop system minus one minus five you can see that and this is minus three exactly where two poles come to each other at some specific point you can see here now for this 20.8 that the pink dots here are the close to poles are exactly at the edge of our 
allowed region which is given here in white uh, region so i'm at the edge and this is the root locus plot and let's look at the step response now i can see in the step response that the over this exactly 10 percent in this case so it is exactly 10 percent and i can see that the settling time is 1.17 for this value so it is in this case all okay so it is exactly 10 or equal to 10 so and it also less than two seconds so design is actually with this value of 20.8 complete but we can of course make a thumbs up but let's look at it in more detail can we make it even better maybe go to the lower limit and make the p controller exactly equal to three and again root locus and a unit step response let's look at it so it's actually at the edge so you can see that this is almost here so this this damping ratio this the absolute damping line is not exactly at minus two so you can see that this is at, at minus two so the calculations are exactly correct so i can now see that the overshoot is in this case there is no overshoot or zero and there's a setting time of 20.3 hmm so we thought actually that the setting time was at the edge and it must be ex expected actually two seconds here so the setting time is definitely a little bit larger than two seconds but overshoot is just zero so i can say overshoot is zero percent so it is definitely smaller than 10 percent that's fine but this is larger now is it possible because i'm at the edge i'm still over that two seconds because i have done this according to the formula now now is the note here the note is the following the formula we have used for the settling time which is the sigma d is equal to four divided by the uh, settling time is an actual actual is an approximation so it is actually a uh, it's, it's actually a range between 3.9 and 4.7 for that numerator in the expression for 4 divided by the settling time so it is not exactly 4 it's most time used as 4 but some books use 4.5 4.6 the other one you will use maybe 3.9 but you will see most literature and most books is for divided by the settling time will be the absolute damping so if you have a little bit larger or maybe a little bit smaller that is possible because the expression is need not exact the expression for the damping ratio and also from the the overshoot is exact for all poles second order system without zeros so we need to adjust this. so let's look at it what we can do with this situation so we haven't done, uh, I've uh, just uh, played around, so I've made some tuning in the MATLAB. I have done, chosen a 3.83 for our controller gain, and we have then the following situation. So I've, I've just increased this. You can see the poles are now a little bit closer than before, and our settling time is exactly two. So I'm actually looking at the edge, and I can also see that the this is fine and i can also see there is no overshoot so there's less than 10 percent for sure and setting time is exactly two seconds so this might be a possible option to say okay i will take this uh, controller with a gain of 3.83 instead of 20.8 why this of course is a smaller value than 20.8 so it is possible it is not realizable maybe due to the system configuration so 3.8 is maybe uh, better for the specific operations so we have designed our, our p controller gain and then this the design is done in this case completed with a gain of 3.83 of course you can figure out uh, maybe a better value for that one but this is after tuning what we have so we will continue with another example also p controller pi controllers pd controllers pid controllers lag lead and different configurations and we will do that in uh, root locus method so i will see you next time and take care